A white Australian right-wing terrorist is one of four people arrested over a pair of mosque massacres in New Zealand that has left at least 49 dead and 48 injured. The gunman, who identified himself as Brenton Tarrant from Grafton, NSW, Australia, stormed the Al Noor Mosque in Christchurch on the country's South Island about 1.30 p.m., opening fire with a semi-automatic shotgun and a rifle on hundreds of defenseless worshippers attending Friday prayers. A sickening 17-minute video of the unfolding horror shows the self-confessed white supremacist dressed in army fatigues firing mercilessly at people scrambling to flee, and calmly reloading when he runs out of bullets. At about the same time, what appears to be a second shooter opened fire at a mosque in Linwood which is within 10 kilometers of the first attack. In the aftermath of the bloody attacks, three men and one woman were arrested, with police charging one man in his late 20s with murder. He is expected to face court on Saturday. Three of the arrests are believed to be directly related to the attacks, with the fourth's involvement still being determined. Of the 49 fatalities, 41 were killed at the Al Noor Mosque and 7 at the Linwood Avenue Mosque. Three were outside the mosque itself. A 49th died in hospital. A further 48 people were rushed to Christchurch Hospital with gunshot wounds, 20 in a critical condition. New Zealand was placed on high alert following the terror attacks, the second highest threat level possible. In New Zealand's worst ever terror attack and one of the worst mass shootings ever. There was another shooting outside Christchurch Hospital and multiple bombs were attached to two cars belonging to the suspects near the mosque. The explosives were quickly disarmed. Police urged people near the area to stay indoors and report suspicious behavior, describing the incident as critical. A lockdown on buildings in the area, including schools, was lifted on Friday evening. Ms. Ardern said there were no further suspects at this stage. New Zealand police have evacuated homes in Dunedin as they investigate a home of interest to the shootings. Early reports indicated a shooting at Christchurch Hospital. However, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said the mosques were the lone targets. She did confirm multiple bombs were attached to two cars belonging to the suspects near the mosque. The explosives were disarmed before they could detonate. Police urged people near the area to stay indoors and report suspicious behavior, describing the incident as critical. A lockdown on buildings in the area, including schools, was lifted on Friday evening. Ms. Ardern said there were no further suspects at this stage. She called the attacks one of New Zealand's darkest days. My thoughts, and I'm sure the thoughts of all New Zealanders, are with those who have been affected, and also with their families. Authorities respond to the attacks. New Zealand Police Commissioner Mike Bush said there were a significant amount of casualties as a result of shootings at two mosques and at Christchurch Hospital. This is absolutely tragic. So many people are affected. We don't know the identities of those who have died yet because those places are in lockdown, he said. He urged Muslims in New Zealand not to go to mosques on Friday. Mr. Bush said four people are in custody. He said there were multiple bombs attached to vehicles near the scene of the shootings. New Zealand police confirmed they were dealing with two shootings at two mosques in Christchurch. We can confirm there have been a number of facilities. We cannot at this stage confirm the precise number but it is significant, a police spokesman said. Ms. Ardern said the attacks were one of New Zealand's darkest days. My thoughts, and I'm sure the thoughts of all New Zealanders, are with those who have been affected, and also with their families. My thoughts are also to those in Christchurch, who are still dealing with an unfolding situation. Ms. Ardern said the shootings were an unprecedented act of violence, an act that has absolutely no place in New Zealand. This is not who we are. The people who were the subject of this attack today, New Zealand is their home. They should be safe here.
the person who has perpetuated this violent act against them, they have no place in New Zealand society. She confirmed that police believe the attacks were meticulously planned out. Ms Ardern flew to Wellington from Christchurch to hold a crisis meeting at Parliament. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison said he was horrified by the callous, right-wing extremist attack. The situation is still unfolding but our thoughts and prayers are with our Kiwi cousins, he said. Sickening attack shared online. The gunman entered the Al Noor Mosque on Friday during afternoon prayers and opened fire. The distressing video streamed on his Facebook shows the 28-year-old man firing more than 100 shots at those inside. His guns were scrawled with the names of past mass killers and cities where the shootings occurred. The gunman's rampage began when he got into his car wearing military-style body armor and a helmet saying let's get this party started. He then drove to the mosque listening to folk music and military tunes before parking in an alley around the corner. The upbringing of a shooter Brenton Tarrant, 28, grew up in Grafton, a small town in northern New South Wales. Tarrant's father, who was a competitive athlete and completed 75 triathlons, died of cancer in 2010 aged just 49. His mother still lives in the area. Tarrant attended a local high school and then worked as a personal trainer at the local Big River Squash and Fitness Center from 2010. A woman who knew Tarrant through the gym said he had always followed a strict dietary and exercise regime. He was very dedicated to his own training and to training others, she said. He threw himself into his own personal training and then qualified as a trainer and trained others. He was very good. When I say he was dedicated, he was dedicated more than most people would be. He was in the gym for long periods of time, lifting heaving weights. He pretty much transformed his body. The woman said she had not spoken to him or heard him talk about his political or religious beliefs. From the conversations we had about life he didn't strike me as someone who had any interest in that or extremist views, she said. But I know he's been traveling since he left Grafton. He has been traveling overseas, anywhere and everywhere. I would say it's something in the nature of his travels, something he's been around. I know he's been to lots of different countries, trying to experience lots of different things in life and I would say something's happened in that time in his travels. The Shooter's Manifesto In a manifesto seemingly written by Tarrant and shared to Twitter, he mentions being inspired by other shooters including Anders Breivik who killed 77 people in Oslo, Norway in 2011. He said he disliked Muslims and hated those who had converted to the religion, calling them blood traitors. Arendt said he originally wanted to target a mosque in Dunedin, south of Christchurch, after watching a video on Facebook. But after visiting the mosques in Christchurch and Linwood and seeing the desecration of the church that had been converted to a mosque in Ashburton, my plans changed, he wrote. The Christchurch and Linwood mosques had far more invaders. He said he had been planning an attack for up to two years and decided on Christchurch three months ago. The shooter said he was motivated to carry out the attack by the death of Swedish schoolgirl Ebba Okerlund a girl who was killed in a terrorist attack in Stockholm in April 2017. Tarrant said he was a supporter of Donald Trump as a symbol of renewed white identity and common purpose. He described himself as just a regular white man. He said he was born to working class, low-income family, who decided to take a stand to ensure a future for my people. My parents are of Scottish, Irish and English stock. I had a regular childhood, without any great issues, he wrote. The gunman said he carried out the massacre to directly reduce immigration rates to European lands. He said New Zealand was not his original choice for the attack but said the location would show that nowhere in the world was safe. We must ensure the existence of our people, and a future for white children, he wrote. 
he wrote that the shooting was an act of revenge on the invaders for the hundreds of thousands of deaths caused by foreign invaders in European lands throughout history. For the enslavement of millions of Europeans taken from their lands by the Islamic Slavas. For the thousands of European lives lost to terror attacks throughout European lands, the gunman wrote. He shared photos to his now-removed Twitter account ahead of the attacks, showing weapons and military-style equipment. In posts online before the attack Tarrant wrote about taking the fight to the invaders myself. There were bodies all over me. Mohammed Jama, the former president of the Muslim Association of Canterbury, said a man with a gun entered the Christchurch mosque about 1.40 p.m. local time on Friday. A man inside the mosque at the time of the shooting said their bodies all over me. Witnesses inside the mosque reported seeing 15 people being shot, including children. A man who escaped the mosque during the shooting said he saw his wife lying dead on the footpath. My wife is dead, he said while wailing. Witness Ahmad al-Mamoud described one of the shooters as being white, with blonde hair and wearing a helmet and bulletproof vest. The guy was wearing like an army, suit. He had a big gun and lots of bullets. He came through and started shooting everyone in the mosque, everywhere, Ahmad al-Mamoud told stuff. They had to smash the door, the glass from the window and the door, to get everyone out. We were trying to get everyone to run away from this area. I ran away from the car park, jumping through the back, yard, of houses. Al Mahmoud said the man was wearing a helmet and must have fired hundreds of gunshots. Another witness said he ran behind the mosque to call the police after hearing the gun go off. I heard the sound of the gun. And the second one I heard, I ran. Lots of people were sitting on the floor. I ran behind the mosque, rang the police. I saw one gun on the floor. Lots of people died and injured. Another survivor, identified only as Noor, told the New Zealand Herald that the gunman shot multiple worshippers outside before carrying out his rampage inside the mosque where he shot people indiscriminately. The heroic police officer intervenes. A person suspected of being involved in the Christchurch mosque shooting was taken into custody on Friday afternoon in a dramatic roadside arrest. Footage filmed by a passing motorist shows the suspect's grey station wagon wedged between the gutter and another police car, with its front wheels in the air spinning. The suspect appeared to still be inside, as officers approached the vehicle with their weapons drawn. One officer reached inside the vehicle and dragged a person out, as a second stood guard with their weapon drawn. The suspect was seen wearing dark clothing, and in the footage an officer appears to have hit the person. Police Commissioner Mike Bush said there were some absolute acts of bravery during the arrests of four people. Bangladesh cricket team narrowly escaped. Bangladesh players and support staff have been preparing for the third test of a series against New Zealand, set to begin on Saturday, and were walking through Hagley Park when shooting broke out at the Al Noor Mosque. Tweets from sports reporters and team members say the group just escaped the shooting, which saw a man enter the mosque and fire multiple shots at dozens of people as they tried to flee. The team's opening batsman, Tami Mikbal said on Twitter the entire team got saved from active shooters. He said it was a frightening experience and asked supporters to keep the team in their prayers. Test captain Mushfiq Rahim said Allah had saved the team. We are, sick, extremely lucky, he wrote. Never want to see this things, sick, happen again. Pray for us. Srinivas Chandrasekharan the team's performance and strategic analyst said they had just escaped active shooters. He said their hearts were pounding and there was panic everywhere. ESPN Chris Info correspondent Mohammed Ezem told the New Zealand Herald the team were not in a mental state to play cricket at all, following the horrific attack. I think they want to go back home as soon as possible. I'm speaking from experience, I'm speaking from what I've heard, he said. Everyone is at the Hagley Park dressing room, two players are back at the hotel. 
They didn't come out for the prayer so they are back at the hotel and the entire coaching staff are safe. The scheduled test between New Zealand and Bangladesh has been cancelled. A witness told Radio New Zealand he heard shots fired and saw blood everywhere. Mr Jama said four people were injured and that he saw two people lying on the ground. He did not know if they were alive or dead, staff reported. There may have been more than one shooter inside the mosque, the New Zealand Herald reported. A man inside the mosque said he ran behind the building when he heard gunfire, one news reported. He said he saw people lying on the ground in pools of blood. A woman told the Christchurch Star she lay down in her car as four or five men came running towards her before hearing gunfire moments later. Security expert Paul Buchanan told RNZ the killings were the worst terrorist attack ever to take place in New Zealand. The gunman's rifle and magazines reportedly had the names of other shooters who had killed people at mosques written on them. A bomb was found in a grey Subaru legacy three kilometres from the scene of the shooting on Strickland Street, The Guardian reported. Twenty armed police officers cleared areas in a suburb of Linwood, and led about five men with their hands on their heads out of a building in the area. Police Commissioner Mike Bush said the shooting was a serious and evolving situation with an active shooter. Police are responding with its full capability to manage the situation, but the risk environment remains extremely high, he said. Police recommend that residents across Christchurch remain off the streets and indoors until further notice. Christchurch schools will be locked down until further notice. The shooting happened near Cathedral Square where thousands of children were protesting for climate change action. The protesting children have been told to go home to ensure their safety. Police officers were also seen at sports ground Hagley Park and at Christchurch Hospital. New Zealand police said armed officers have been deployed in the area. A business owner near the mosque said a man who fled the area told him the shooting happened inside. A witness said they heard at least 50 gunshots and saw people lying on the ground. Another witness said he saw a car chasing two people from outside the mosque along Dean's Avenue. He said the people in the car began shooting at the two people. Christchurch Boys and Girls High Schools were both being placed into lockdown but it has since been lifted. Parents of students at Christchurch Girls High School were sent a text message telling them the lockdown was not an exercise. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern has cancelled her planned events for Friday afternoon in light of the shooting. The Canterbury District Health Board has activated its mass casualty plan and the City Council has placed its central city buildings into lockdown. Rugby star Sonny Bill Williams has shared an emotional tribute to those killed in Friday's mosque shooting. In a video posted to Twitter, a tearful Williams, who is a proud Muslim, said he couldn't put into words how I feel right now. The 33-year-old told followers he was sending prayers to the loved ones of those killed, and praying himself the victims would end up in paradise. Just sending my duas, prayers and Mashallah, God willing, everyone that's been killed today in Christ Church. Your families, I'm, just sending my duas to your loved ones and Mashallah you guys are all in paradise, he said. I'm just deeply, deeply saddened that this would happen in New Zealand. Only 1% of New Zealand's population of 5 million are Muslim, according to government statistics. Worst Peacetime Gun Massacres New Zealand's worst ever gun massacre ranks among some of the world's most horrible mass murders. The death toll has surpassed Australia's April 1996 Port Arthur massacre in Tasmania, which saw 35 people gunned down at an historic tourist attraction. New Prime Minister John Howard spearheaded national gun laws in the wake of this tragedy. It occurred just seven weeks after Scotland's Dunblane massacre which saw 16 children and one teacher shot dead near the town of Stirling. Port Arthur was the world's worst peaceful massacre until June 2016, 
When a 29-year-old security guard killed 49 people at the American Pulse Gay Nightclub at Orlando, Florida. Just over a year later, in October 2017, a gunman opened fire killing 58 people at the Route 91 Music Festival in Las Vegas. The United States has been home to a spate of gun massacres, defined as the death of four or more people. In April 2007, 32 people were killed at Virginia Tech when a student opened fire at Blacksburg. In December 2012, a gunman shot and killed 20 children aged between 6 and 7 years old at the Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. In November 2017, a gunman opened fire at the First Baptist Church at Sutherland Springs in Texas, killing 27 people including the 14-year-old daughter of the church pastor. Until now, New Zealand had not had a mass shooting since June 1994, when David Bain, 22, killed his further Robin, mother Margaret, his sister Zarawa and Laniat, and his brother Stephen. New Zealand tightened gun laws after the Aramoana massacre of November 1990, which saw 13 people shot dead in a small township near Dunedin following a neighborhood dispute.